just the were you at all surprised when your son said yeah I'm Nebraska all in let's do it or did you see this coming as as the relationship grew for your son no I I uh, I gotta tell everybody I kind of let him make that decision a couple days prior to uh, him when he shot the video they shot four or five different schools mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and prior to him releasing the video within a couple days he calls and I don't know if I was, I don't know where I was. I might have been in my office or something. And he was saying that he thinks he wants to go. Uh, he says, I think I want to go to USC. And I was like, well, if you want to go to USC, go to USC. Just understand when you walk in one of those buildings, there's some pictures and there's a couple of places with my name on it and this, that, and the other, and da, 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 da. And he goes, well, yeah, but I kind of, you know, I like Nebraska better and more and this, that, and the other. And I'm like, well, go to Nebraska. It's up to you. You just got to realize that you're going to Nebraska. So it was kind of like, Whatever you wanted to do, I'm with it. And at the end, he was like, I'm just going to go to Nebraska. I was like, good. You should just call the coaches and tell them. I want you to call the other coaches that recruited you and thank them, and and that's it. But just know when you commit, you won't commit. I mean, you won't decommit to go to any other schools. And if anybody offer you, tell them thank you, but you're fully committed. And that's pretty much what what mm -hmm. it is. And then I said the only, reason, only way you'll ever – uh, decommit is if Coach Riley isn't there come February of 2017 mm -hmm. when you uh, have to sign your national level intent, or, and that's it. Mm -hmm. I mean, and we'll have a clear indication of that yeah. before, <laughs> right. if, if that ever would happen. Is it uh, your relationship with Coach Riley? Uh, how do you? Has it grown over the years, or has it just kind of developed it such a strong bond in college? It just stayed true. No, it's, it's it's been the same throughout. It's gotten better over the years now that I've had. My son's starting to go through the recruiting process, get a little bit older. Now we got more to talk about other than why would you call that play, you know, at Oregon State, sure, what sure. were you thinking, <laughs> you know, from afar, stuff right, like right. that. You know, I would probably text him or call up and be like, you know, what the what are you yeah. thinking on that play? Why would you, oh, well, G key, you know. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of, right. but then since the recruiting process, obviously I'm in more contact with him and his family and everything like that. It's just, it's different. I watched you today interact with your son. You, you coaching him up, obviously. Um, it, do you? Are you hard? How, how would you describe your relationship with your son in terms of how you coach him? I don't really. I just I coach him probably, you know, just as anybody else would. I just say little things. To sure. Him. Like you shouldn't did that. Why would you do that? You know. Right. right. Are you? You know. Why are you walking instead of jogging? Just simple. Sure. Simple stuff like that. But I don't. You know, I tell him it's on him. It's up to you. I got a degree. Sure. I made a lot of money in pros. I can go to my ATM machine. It's up to you. It's, it's all up to you. Mm -hmm. It ain't up to me. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. And I tell him the same way I would tell my nephew, I would tell my little son, and anybody. I've I've already lived. Right. It's all I've I've laid the foundation, the groundwork, the expectations is all on you. You're gonna be graded harder by people, way harder. Okay, than than I ever was, because you're my son and. People want to see you succeed, but they also want to see you fail because they want to say, ha-ha, but don't give them the opportunity to. And that's really the only thing that I ever try to tell him. I don't try to control anything. If he wanted to go to Texas A&M, go to Texas A&M. Just understand what that offense is. Mm -hmm. If you want to go to Oregon, understand what that offense is. Understand what those what that system provides. Understand what that education is. And that's pretty much all I ever say to him. Mm -hmm. Well, to have the entire Nebraska staff come out here almost because of the relationships they've been able to build with the Calabasas guys for a lot of reasons. I mean, how special was that to have everybody from Nebraska out here today for you guys? Well, I, I think they, you know, you got to look at they're really truly a West Coast staff from Oregon State, and they've had they've had the luxury of recruiting this area as well as other parts of Southern California, California in general. The difference is the brand of Nebraska versus the brand of Oregon State, and yeah, I'm sure the Golden Rivals and Oregon State people will kill me, but the brand is a, a different brand. Nebraska, Oregon State. Nebraska, Oregon State. It's not even in the same, you know, and so the fact that they can come out here, if they came out here for the Oregon State deal, that would have probably been what it looked like, show up. But the fact that it is Nebraska, Nebraska's been on the radar for however many years and national championships and great academics and this, 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 and this, plus a well-known coach from the West Coast, kids are going to want to come out and want to be a part of it. Calabasas, you know, the three or four guys that have committed or in the mix of scholarships at Nebraska, I can't truly believe that those kids would have been interested in Coach Riley and Oregon State had they just wouldn't have. 
but this is Nebraska. It's the Big Ten. It's Ohio State. It's it's Michigan. Michigan State. That's that says a lot. And it's only a two-hour, forty-five-minute direct flight now that Southwestern American Airlines have flights. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the difference between going here to Seattle or here to Texas to play? It's, you know, it's pretty pretty good, I would think. And once the kids actually get on campus and they understand that most college campuses, in my opinion, what I told my son, we visited God knows how many schools. They're all the same. The only ones that's different are Seattle, USC, UCLA, Ohio State that are in big cities. Everything else is small towns and the town revolve around the school. And that's what you're going to get unless you go to a big city. Keyshawn, how did Mike Riley impact your life? How did he? Yeah. Well, he let me call some plays. That's number one. <laughs> <laughs> um, he just, you know, and just in terms of a genuine coach that you can trust and you believe and you understand and he understands you. And it's, I was telling somebody earlier, they asked me what the difference is. And I say, well, he's not, you know, everybody thinks that you have to be this coach with a whistle in your mouth, screaming and yelling and shrugging at everybody all the time. That's not, you don't have to take that approach. You take the approach just like he has, and he's been very successful at it. Yes, he hasn't won any Rose Bowls at Oregon State, but you're probably not going to win any Rose Bowls at Oregon State because you're not going to get the quality of player, you know, that can compete with the other teams. So, you know, when you look at that and you know what he is as a coach and, and secondly as a human being and as a person, that's all you need, you know. You don't need to a guy who will not take suggestions. I remember in college we – we created some plays that has lived on and people look at that and they can't believe that we sat down and put that together and he'll never take the credit for it he just won't um but i know that that was something that he put together because pre him you never saw that play post him you see it all the time and that's just the type of individual i had coaches before that you suggest something to and they look at you like you're crazy and tell you okay 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 you never see the play at least if you suggest something to him he goes, okay, he tries it, sees if it works, and the next thing you know, it's either in or it's out. You mentioned uh, how exciting it is to, to get another kid from uh, Southern California. This is a real thing, this Calabrasca stuff, isn't it? It's got to be pretty exciting being in your spot, seeing what's happening. No, it is. You, you want to, you know, I want my son to go to school around people that he's familiar with. That's good. And, and I think the fact that they can come into California and recruit, and California kids are not afraid to go two and a half hours, three hours away from home to play their ball. I think it's a plus. Plus, you know, you know that there's a lot of talent here, and Nebraska's kind of, uh, kind of, you know, handicapped because it's in Nebraska, and there's nothing really, you know, around in terms of big cities, and it's hard to recruit to a place that I guess you consider it hard to get to. I don't. If I had to go through Denver, go through Omaha, fine. So what? So be it. If I had to go to Minnesota and come, so be it. But a lot of people think that that's like, you know, terrible to do. And the fact that they can come out here and get the, and garnish the attention of all these different high school uh, prospects, I mean, it's just like, okay, this is a real, let's go. Let's try to get, you know, let's try to, I think they'll probably wind up landing about six or seven guys out of the California class, out of California this year for this class. You mentioned the brand of Nebraska. Do you think it's uh, still the same brand as it was uh, during your playing days? Yeah, it's still, it, it, the Nebraska brand is going to forever be Nebraska brand. You know, think about it. What, what brand of football? There's about, I always say there's about 10 different, hey, there's about 10 different college football programs that you won't leave for another job. And Nebraska happens to fall into that 10. You know, you, you nobody leaves USC unless they're going to the pros. Nobody leaves Texas unless they're going to the pros. You don't leave Ohio State. You don't leave Alabama. You don't leave Michigan. You don't leave Nebraska. You're not going to all of a sudden leave Nebraska to go coach at Colorado or go coach at Minnesota. or go. You're just not going to do it. But you'll leave Florida to go coach Alabama or you'll leave Florida to go, you know what I'm saying? So it's only a handful of schools that's like that, and Nebraska falls under that. So the brand, although their winning percentage hasn't been as strong under Tom Osborne, but this isn't the same. It's different. So you got to get over it. Got to get over that. Got to let it go. It's you, you can hold on to the memories, but that is not. It's not the same. USC is not the same as Pete Carroll. We got to let it go. It's different now. You know, Oregon's not the same as Chip Kelly. You got to let it go. And so I know it's hard for fans to really understand that because they want to see. You know, they want to. They want to see that. I mean, when I was a kid, I used to be at home and watching on ABC, 
In Nebraska, we rank like fourth in the country, and they're losing to like Wyoming three to nine, beginning of the fourth quarter, for instance. By the time they get to the, it was like 56 to nine. You know, you, it doesn't, it's not like that anymore. It's parody in, the, in college football.